a little over 200. So I would, I'm not saying you got to pack every seat, but if we can kind of hit the first four or five rows of both sides and just kind of fan out. So nobody passed, nobody passed. You guys are, yeah, come on up one more row. Your row, one more row. Kathy, y'all, maybe up another row or two. How about that? This side, I feel like there, we need to do this in the room. That side over there is like, you're, you're going to be like heavy on this side. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to welcome you guys. This is our second Gateway Women's Night of Worship, and I'm so thrilled that you're here tonight. I'm so glad it quit raining. Um, so, um, we're going to get started. I want you to just take tonight to just breathe, rest a little bit. Um, I've already heard the worship set. You guys are in for a real treat. And, um, I just want you to just indulge yourself in the Lord, um, before we indulge ourselves in some chocolate. Um, so just, just rest in the Lord, worship the Lord. And, um, I'm going to start us off with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and your faithfulness to us. You are an awesome God, and you are so deserving and worthy of our praise. Lord, and tonight I pray, God, that you are just thrilled beyond measure as your daughters stand before you tonight and lift your name high. Lord, as we worship you, Lord, as our Savior and our King. And so, Lord, we invite your presence, Lord. I know you're already here. But, Lord, if you want the invitation, Lord, we extend the invitation, Lord. You're welcome here tonight, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. <laughs> All right, would you stand with us, please? Let's worship. By the cross you came and broke them down You broke them down There were chains around us By your grace we are no longer bound No longer bound You call me out of the grave You call me into the light You call my name and then my heart came alive Your love is great
Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord.
I just feel like God wants to remind someone in this place that his love is bigger than your situation. He loves you more than you could ever imagine or think. So I just want to sing this one more time. Just declare this over yourself tonight. Declare this over your situation tonight. It's no shadow. It's no shadow. There's no shadow. himself away and sometimes I feel like fear keeps us back from telling the Lord that we need him we feel like we're bothering him or we feel like we're asking too much or we sometimes feel like it's his love is enough for everybody else but not for us personally or we have faith to pray for everybody else but ourselves um, so I just want to declare over all of you that his love is enough to fill every void in your heart tonight. Every need that you have. He can fill up every canyon and still have more overflowing. You're not asking too much. So whatever it is that you walked in with even tonight on your heart that you need a touch from the Lord specifically about, he wants to meet that need. Thirsty. 
take us deeper, to take us further, Lord, into your presence, Jesus. You are so beautiful. You are so powerful. You are so wonderful, Lord. No words that we write, no words we sing, no words we say will ever be able to completely describe or completely fill who you are. You're so much bigger than all of it, than all of us, than anything we face, than anything we see, than anything we feel, Lord. I thank you so much that you're already in this room and that you're working in whatever situation each woman walked into this room with, Lord, and that you're there, that you're present, that you're powerful, that you are wonderful, that you are beautiful, no matter what they're facing, no matter what they're walking in with, Lord. You're bigger than all of it. And we just give you all the honor and glory, Lord, this this evening. We thank you for being present. We thank you for showing up. May our words, may our worship be something that you just delight in. May you just smile upon us tonight. May you give those who need rest, rest, reprieve, reprieve, those healing that Give them healing tonight, Lord. We love you, Jesus. You are the one that began. When I'm with God, the Lord most high.
like this and we've allowed the Lord to kind of settle in on us we kind of opened our hearts up a little bit we kind of washed out the day um, and we kind of focused on him I want to take the time now for us to spend a little bit of time in prayer <clears throat> and what I have learned is that there's probably as many of you that walked in the door with different issues different things that you've walked in with and whenever we have a gathering of women I don't ever want to miss the opportunity that we can gather together with one another and we can lay hands on one another and we can pray for one another. And so that's what we're going to do probably for the next 15 minutes or so, 15 or 20 minutes. Um, we're just going to play some music here for a little bit. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to pray for some specific things that I know 
that um, are some big challenges in our lives as women. Um, we're going to pray for our marriages. Um, we're going to pray for us as moms, um, raising our kids. And um, we're going to pray for physical healing. And we're going to pray for um, fears and anxieties. And um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you guys to be seated. Um, I'm going to have Anna step up here now. And, I, and I'm, I'm really going to encourage you guys. <clears throat> This is a very safe place. We're going to have um, some people be pretty vulnerable with you um, on some things they've walked through. And I hope, my hope is that you hear people who've walked through struggles and they're, um, they've seen the Lord be faithful and walk them through it. And so I know that there will be probably people in the room tonight that will be walking through some similar things. And so we're going to encourage you um, to let us pray for you to let us take advantage of this time when we're gathered together. So I'm going to pass it to Anna. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, <clears throat> so Gina asked me to, to talk about marriage. And I don't know if it's because I've been married for almost 31 years or because she's heard me gripe throughout some of the years <laughs> about my marriage. But as I was kind of processing through it and thinking about, okay, well, what, what do I say? Um, the Lord really kind of put it on my heart um, a couple things. Number one was he kind of had me look at my marriage, you know, kind of broken down into thirds. So the, the first nine years or nine, ten years um, after Tom and I got married, we, we had some, some definite struggles. We had several years struggling with infertility. Um, then came along our two beautiful adopted kids, one of uh, who's worshiping with me tonight. Um, we had, we suffered some pretty major marriage issues. Um, we suffered a loss of a job and having to move ourselves and two kids in with my parents. That was not fun. <laughs> so the thing was during that time period, um, we were what we, ca we called ourselves Christians. We went to church, you know, we were believers, but we didn't have a personal relationship with the Lord. And, but what we do know is that there were some very important people who were, did, were in relationship and did understand and know the power of God that were praying for us. And we saw a mighty healing in our lives um, and in our marriage. And so um, that was kind of like the first major thing that happened um, for us. Fast forward to the next, I don't know, it was like seven or eight years or so. And, um, you know, life was kind of clipping along. You know, we were doing okay, but we weren't really thriving. And then we had another really tragic thing happen to us. Um, my sister died very suddenly. Now, my sister was one of those who was, um, she and her church family were some of the people that were very important and instrumental in praying for us in our marriage and, and for our family. So it was a real crisis of faith, but what we discovered then through the love of her church and just the love of God is that there was something missing. And so Tom and I made a big change um, we changed churches, we eventually found Gateway, and we, we figured it out that we had to have a personal relationship with Christ. And so together we found freedom and healing. We found, um, we found forgiveness for each other and for ourselves. Um, we learned to love each other like Christ loves the church. And as I often say, I'm a recovering control freak. Any other ladies out there? Um, I had to learn to stop trying to control my husband and give him the honor and respect that he deserved, even when I didn't feel like it. And so um, from that point forward, we just, we learned and we're just growing and growing and life isn't perfect. We have our issues, we have our ups and downs, but we're in relationship with the Lord and we know the power of his love and um, we know the power of the prayer and what we have, 
within us. So we love that we have a church family and people that are praying with us, but we can do it ourselves now too. Now the crazy thing is, as you all, many of you I know know, that just because you're in relationship with the Lord doesn't mean that tough things stop happening. Um, so six years ago, when our oldest was 20 years old, he had a stroke. And we discovered that he had, um, has a disease called Moya Moya. And I won't go into all the details of that, but he had to have two major brain surgeries. A year later, my father became very ill after an operation and um, he was in nursing homes and hospitals for like 13 months. And my parents moved in with us, so we came full circle. <laughs> so um, anyway, I guess really what I wanted to do and what I felt like the Lord put on my heart to do was to encourage you that, um, that things aren't always perfect. They're not always rosy. You're gonna go through tough times, but with the Lord and believing that he is who he says he is and that he can do what he says he can do you can make it through it so we just wanted to invite um, anybody to just anybody raise their hand if you've had seen a healing in your marriage if you've had an issue and you don't have to share what it is but just raise your hand if you've had an experience where the Lord has healed your marriage awesome. I can't see very well, but I... <laughs> all right, come on. I know more of you. Come on, come on. Well, if you feel comfortable um, because you've had that healing in your marriage, what we would like for you to do is to come forward and then we'd like to invite anybody who feels like that they need prayer for their marriage now to come forward and receive that prayer. Ladies, you know, Part of what Gina has done with these is events is that we're called to to come together as women. You know, it's a tough world out there, and we have to support one another. So please, if you ladies who have experienced that healing and, and would feel okay with praying, if you'd come forward um, along here. Right, Gina? <laughs> point of this is sometimes it's a little intimidating to say you know what gosh I'm struggling in my marriage right now and and I'm not saying it has to be you you're on the brink of divorce but marriage is hard it takes work and any little thing that concerns you concerns the Lord and so with these ladies who have stood here and said you know what I am a testimony that God is faithful and that he has healed in my marriage and it's hopefully to help you guys realize that there's no shame in saying I'm there right now and I really need somebody to, to come alongside of me and pray for me. That's what we're trying to do tonight. Um, so with that said, if you have, if you are in a season of your life right now that's really hard in your marriage and you want someone to come alongside of you and pray for you, I would love for you to come forward and just let one of these, come stand with one of these ladies and let them pray over you, and then we're going to pray um, a prayer at the end for marriages. So, come on. <clears throat> yeah, you guys. ladies that are at your seats, if you don't mind, just be in prayer, um, be mindful, and just be in prayer for these ladies up front.
Lord, we thank you for this time that we have together as women to worship you. And Lord, we lift up these marriages to you tonight, Lord. And as Gina said, the different problems and issues that we face are as many as the women who are in this room. But Lord, we know that you know each and every one of them. We thank you for that personal relationship, Lord. We thank you for the for the people that are praying for us and with us. And we thank you for the ability to come straight to you, Lord, and, and to lift up our problems to you. So, Lord, we're asking and believing and praying for miracles to be done here tonight, to, for, for chains to be broken, for unforgiveness to be forgiven, for hurts to be healed, for anger to be smothered out, Lord. We just pray for each and every woman here. Lord, we know that the, the enemy is against all of our marriages. And we, so whether any of these ladies are having current problems or not, we just lift them all up to all these marriages up to you. And we ask for, for your protection, Lord. And we go out tonight just in the power of, of that protection with the full armor of God on. We thank you that you've provided that for us. We love you, Lord. In the same way that marriage is um, a sanctifying process through which the Lord reveals to the world the relationship between Christ and his bride, the church, parenting is hands down the most pruning, exposing, and humbling method that he uses to make us a little bit more like Jesus every day. Um, But it is also um, a way that he allows us a unique insight into his father's heart. Um, And so we're going to move into a time where we get to pray um, for all the mamas and all the mamas-to-be in this room. Um, But before we move into that, just a little picture of why I know it's so humbling and pruning. Um, So 11 years ago, if you had asked me how I thought I would do at parenting, I probably would have told you I got this. Um, All my years of nannying and babysitting and daycare jobs, I pretty much thought I would phone it in. And then we had our first son. And his name was Bishop. Is it is still Bishop, um, though he doesn't answer to it a lot to me anyway. Um, and when he was five years old, he was diagnosed with um, high functioning autism. And at the time, we had a three year old son named Bennett, um, who is his middle child as they come. And then we were also pregnant and just a few weeks away from having our third son, Brenner, who also at the age of five was diagnosed on the spectrum. And so, if you can imagine, um, I learned very quickly that I would be phoning nothing in. Um, that it would be quite a journey for us as a, as a married couple and just as a family. Um, and so when Gina called and asked me to facilitate this piece, um, it's not because I was nailing it. Um, it's, it was because she, she knows I stay close to the cross because of my three boys. Um, but when I was asking the Lord, what is a scripture that um, can kind of help steer and guide this time? I went to a lot of the go-tos, the Proverbs 31, but how many in here can raise their hand and say they meet that standard even that much? We don't need to be reminded of everything we're not. And by the way, can we acknowledge that verse 15 15 says that she had a whole slew of female servants? So there's that. I do not. (laughs) So, So anyway, then there's all the scriptures about children being a heritage and a reward and that we're to rejoice over them and all of that. And, um, but if we're honest, a lot of us just are not right there. We're just not there right now. Uh, Doesn't mean we haven't been, doesn't mean we're not going to be just, that may not be where we are right now. We're rejoicing (laughs) feels like the, the natural thing to do. And then the Lord in my quiet time the other day took me to Psalm 84, which is a passage that I go to pretty regularly, um, when I'm praying for someone grieving or feeling despair. But when I read it this time through the lens of motherhood, I just felt like this was right. And um, so Psalm 84, verses 17 and 18 said, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them, and he delivers them from their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves the crushed in spirit. And as I look around the room, I feel confident that I'm not the only one who kind of is falling somewhere in that pendulum of brokenhearted or crushed in spirit at different times in in my day. (laughs) 
not just my life. Sometimes it's just in and out in a day. Maybe you're here and um, your heart is broken because of a wayward son or daughter that you just don't know what to do with. And maybe you're here and your spirit feels crushed because of a diagnosis, whether it's an illness or um, some condition or disability, but whatever it is, the trajectory of your family's life has been altered. And sometimes that's crushing. And maybe you're here and your soul is tormented because you want so badly to be a mom, but you're not yet for whatever reason that is. And you're just frustrated with the pain that that causes. Maybe you're a single mom and you are bearing the mantle of the role of mom and dad on a daily basis and that weight is getting heavier and heavier. And maybe you're here and your children are perfectly healthy. They're passing all their classes and they're angels at school, but your life at home, it kind of feels a little out of control. We see you and we hear you and we stand with you. And so if you're here, And you have walked one of these hills at some point in your parenting journey, whether it was 20 years ago or yesterday. Would you, you know it's coming, would you be willing to raise your hand and maybe stand for just a second as almost a symbol of hope to the other moms in the room? Standing does not mean that you have it licked, that you, you figured out somehow that secret formula and it's been smooth sailing ever since. Because just like with marriage, every single week, every single day holds a different mountain to climb. But it does mean that you've seen God's faithfulness at some point, whether it's through a healing or a deliverance or just getting you through the dadgum day. Sometimes that's, that's the miracle, right? So if you are in here and you've, you've walked that piece, would you be willing to stand as a symbol of hope that there is an other side to whatever the mountain you're looking at is today? And then would you maybe be willing to come forward? And um, in a minute, we'll allow the other moms and moms to be in the room that just need, just need someone to hold their arms up for a minute um, to come and let you do that for them. So if you're one of those people, the previous one, who have claimed victory over your parenting journey, would you come and stand up here with me? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Get up here, Elizabeth. I know you've walked some journeys. So the rest of you, we probably all should just be flooding up here at their feet, right? Um, If you've got a particular struggle that you're walking right now with parenting, would you be willing to come up and let, let our sisters pray over you? Just for a minute. Y'all feel free to come forward.
join me in praying. Father, we come to you as your daughters, to the one and only perfect parent in the universe. And God, many of us probably at one point in our journey stood on a stage much like this with our babies cradled in our hands, giving them to you, dedicating our lives to raising them in a way that pleases you and that turns their hearts to you. But as we learned very quickly, it's not all meadows and picnics. But God, some days are really, really hard. And so we just press into you. We press into you for your strength. We press into you for your peace, for your joy, for your courage to go another day. We know how much you love us and we know how much you love our little ones. Sometimes some of them not little ones. And so again, we just give them to you and we entrust them to you. We trust that you, um, if you haven't already, will capture their hearts. And that in the process, you will change ours and you will continue to mold ours to be more like yours. And so we just lay it down at your feet, knowing that we are not perfect, but that there is grace and there is mercy and there is love because of Jesus. And we just thank you so much for him. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Well, I feel like I could come up for prayer, and I feel like I could pray for people, both. Anybody else? I'm like on the fence every time. I'm like, I've had some victory, but I need prayer also. So um, if the Lord's moving you, make sure that you respond either way, just just, I think, walking up just shows your heart is responding, right? Um, I wanted to share a little bit about my experience with healing. Um, so it was probably um, 2002, I believe it was, um, when I started experiencing some tingling and twitching and all kinds of weird feelings that basically my doctor thought I was crazy, put me on some crazy meds because he didn't know what to do with me because all my tests were coming back normal. Um, but really long story short, um, I had gotten a tick bite five years previous and it just, at that point, and had been through two pregnancies and at that point, um, you know, it had moved past the joint pain and moved past um, the lesser symptoms, shall we say. And it was into the neurological part of the disease before I knew what was going on. And um, it took me months to figure it out, um, well, years. But when I found a doctor that diagnosed me, um, he said, I'm 99% sure that this is what it is. It's Lyme disease. And he started putting me on antibiotics, which I took for 18 months straight. If that won't mess up your gut, I don't know what will. Um, but I knew at that point in time, that was the only option I knew about. Like that's, um, I started changing my diet. I started, you know, I felt like the Lord said, you do your part, I'll do my part. So my part was the diet and exercise and his part was, I didn't know what yet, I was waiting. But I remember being on my living room floor at one point, so frustrated because I felt like um, he wasn't there. Like, I just, I didn't understand why I was going through this. Um, and I cried out to him and I said this night, Lord, I don't even have the, like, the strength or energy to find what you're trying to tell me tonight. So can you just show me when I open up the word? Can you just show me something that gives me hope? And I saw a verse that said, this sickness is not fatal. It's an occasion to show glory by glorifying God's son. So I took that as his promise that he was going to heal me. Um, and then uh, fast forward a little ways, I went up to Michigan to a healing service, um, which I didn't really grow up in a denomination that prayed for healing. So it was a new experience for me um, when the power of the Holy Spirit knocked me out on the floor. And I was down there for probably 30 minutes, and I felt like the Lord said, that was just my fingertip. And I felt love and electricity rushing through my body. And within two months, it took me about two months for every symptom to drop. And at the end of that two months, the doctor cleared me of Lyme. My blood work changed. Um, and I was really good for about 10 years. 
And after that 10 years, I got four more tick bites and I was back in bed. So how can you make sense of that, right? Um, but the Lord showed me other ways that he heals me. So I, I started researching more about essential oils because I knew I didn't want to do the antibiotics again. And he used other things this time to show me healing. So um, where I am right now, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm stable. I have enough energy for the day, which I'm thankful for. Um, because in the past, there were many times I didn't have that. Um, and the Lord is truly my strength and sustains me. But it's a journey, like all of us, right? It's another one of those things where I could be down there or I could be in front of those people, either one. Um, but I just want you to remember the Lord heals in lots of ways. And that's one of the biggest takeaways that he's taught me. Um, he can heal any way he wants. He could heal you tonight, right here at the front. When we open up this altar for prayer, he could pray you, he could heal you during the middle of the night. You could wake up feeling different. He could heal you through a process. Even Jesus prayed for someone for blindness twice before that man was healed. So um, those of you that have experienced victory in any way, um, don't, don't get too heady about this. If you've experienced victory and healing, um, would you please come to the front? including you. I'm going to start calling people out. <laughs> um, and I don't know if we still have, do we still have anointing oil back there on that shelf? Maybe we could also grab that because the word says um, that we should anoint with oil and pray, right? When somebody's sick. And we might not technically be elders, but I think we're all right. Um, so those of you that need healing, would you um, make your way forward, please? And um, if you've been prayed for before and you haven't seen um, really any movement that you can tell um, on God's behalf, don't give up. He gives, he opens the door. He, you know, the story about the man that knocked, um, was it a man or a lady? I don't know. Someone was knocking on a door in the middle of the night, and um, they wanted bread, right, during the middle of the night. And basically the whole gist of the story was keep knocking. So we are here to knock with you tonight. We're here to knock on heaven's door with you and ask for healing. So I know there's more of you. Come on up. Anybody else? We're just going to start praying. Don't, don't be shy about this. This could be life-changing. If you take that step and come forward, it could be life-changing for you. Is there one more? There she comes. There's one right here that for you. And if you that are seated out in the chairs, if you wouldn't mind raising your hands this direction and praying where you are in agreement with what's happening up front.
Lord Jesus, we thank you that um, we're healed by your stripes, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you can heal any way you want to. You can use any means, Lord, any channel or any road for healing. And so, Lord, I pray for healing. We just ask for your touch in these bodies, in these hearts, in these minds, whatever the need may be. Lord, I pray that you would meet them right where they are. And Lord, I even ask for miracles tonight. I boldly ask you, Lord, because you say we can come before your throne with boldness. And Lord, I thank you for our sisters right here, Lord. And we just come up, even as little girls would do together, we run up to our dad together as daughters, knowing that we're loved. Lord, I pray that you would seal and complete um, what is started in this night, Lord, if this is this, if it's a process type healing, Lord, I pray for faith and I pray for strength, faith and strength, that those would continue to be lit in the hearts of those that are walking through a process of healing. And then, Lord, for any miracles, Lord, um, that you would like to complete even in one night, even in this night, we'll take that too, Lord. Any way you want to heal. Thank you, Jesus, that you are healing. And thank you that one day we are going to be jumping around the throne of God together. So thankful to be complete and whole and healed and free of pain and sickness. And we all have that complete wholeness to look forward to, Lord, no matter what our process looks like here on this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you know me, you know that I've got four kids, four boys, more specifically. Um, and the littlest one, Tatum, is just hitting that age right now. He's 18 months old where he's getting into everything. And we're remembering all over again what that looks like. We have found him on the kitchen table. We have found him on the counters. Uh, just today we found him climbed up the top of the stairs when one of his brothers opened the little gate up. And he just has no fear. And I want to blame Chris for this so badly. I want to say this is his fault, but the reality is it's probably mine. I was that kid that my grandma used to tell stories of me. She'd find me at the top of the china cabinet at that age, you know? And so I kind of, I had that in me. I had that fearlessness and just that risk taker mentality, you know? And I really, it started when I was little, but I, it went with me. My whole life, so I've lived a lot of my life taking a lot of risks, not having a lot of fear, just going for it. You know, one of those people that talks first and then thinks about what they just said. But a couple years ago, I started to experience a lot of fear in life and anxiety. And I had had a little bit of anxiety before, but it was just strong. I remember as soon as it'd start to get dark in the evenings, this anxiety would just well up in me, this fear that the end of the day was coming and I didn't get enough done. I didn't do enough. I wasn't focused enough. And so I just, I have learned so much through this process that God showed me this verse that said, you know, you should not fear men above God. And I found out that every time I fear circumstances, I fear finances, I fear um, relationships and things that could happen, you know, safety for my children, so many different things that I'm actually putting those things, I'm giving them in my mind a power that's greater than what the God of the universe has. And that's completely ridiculous, right? But when you're in that moment, you feel that anxiety and you feel that fear it's so real and it's such a big deal, you know, in your heart and in your life. And so I want to pray for this. And you guys, this covers so many areas. We've prayed for marriages tonight. We've prayed for children, but sometimes maybe there's fear in singleness. Maybe there's fear in your future, in your career path. Maybe there's fear in whether you'll have children or, you know, what, what will happen when they get to be teenagers? I got that one. You know, um, maybe there's fear in just getting to the, to the next day. Maybe you're overcome by your circumstances. And so I want to pray for this today. And you guys just let this kind of be a blanket thing 
that's covering, if there's something tonight that you're saying, they haven't called out my thing yet, then I want this to be your thing. So up front, I'd like to invite anybody who has learned to cope in their life with fear, with anxiety, with uncertainty, knowing that God can come alongside you and help you through that process. Would you come forward if you are willing to pray with others who would like prayer for those things? Anybody else want to pray for others? Awesome. Okay, would you come forward if you would like prayer for a fear you're dealing with, for an anxiety you're dealing with, and if there's something else we haven't mentioned, please come, come forward now for prayer. God, I just want to pray for, for every person in this room, Lord Jesus. That as we learn to trust you, as we learn more and more what you're capable of, of your might, of the grace that you have for our shortcomings, that it's sufficient, that fear has no place in the presence of an almighty God. Lord, would you bring comfort? Would you bring peace? I pray for the reminder that we would seek your word and seek your presence in those times 
of worry, in those times of fear, those times of anxiety, no matter what the root cause seems to be, what the issue is, Lord, I pray that we would learn to lean on you. And I thank you for the way you're ministering to each heart in this room. God, we love you. Amen. Ladies, would you stand with us and let's just worship. Grander earth is shaped before Moved by the sound of his voice And seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken for my regard And through it all, through it all My eyes are on you through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you, and it is well with me. Far be it from me to not believe Even when my eyes can see And this mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the midst of the sea And through it all, through it all My eyes are
you ladies for leading us tonight lord can we give them just a round thank you so much such beautiful voices um, and i really appreciate your your time every one of you for taking the extra time that you needed to rehearse and to learn and to do this for us tonight i really appreciate it um so just a few announcements um, before we get out there to that chocolate fountain that just keeps overflowing and overflowing and overflowing. Um, there is plenty out there, so you guys need to really eat up. Um, the first thing I wanted to announce is um, there's a sign-up sheet. There's a couple of sign-up sheets as you're going to go out the door. We're trying to capture some, some more emails. Um, you won't get bombarded with them, but when events like this come up, we're trying to um, create a database for women for women's events. So there, if you are not currently getting an email, um, if you didn't get one about tonight, you're not on the list. And if you would like to be on the list, there is an email sign up right as you go out the door. Um, also, we're adding something new um, in May, May the 12th. Um, we've had a couple of ladies that have had a heart for doing something else um, outside of a Sunday morning, outside of a life group, and outside of an event like this. So um, the men in our church do a breakfast once a month, and so we decided that they shouldn't be the only ones having breakfast um, on a Saturday. We may not do it right away once a month, but we're going to try to get a few in, and the first one coming up is on May the 12th. Um, there is a sign-up sheet out there as well for that specifically. We're going to try to gather um, email addresses for that so you can be reminded of it. And they, that's going to be something where we're going to do a food count, so we're going to have a little, need to have a little bit more accuracy on about how many are going to plan so we have enough food for you on that. So please take advantage of that. Suki and Nola will be at the table, and they can answer any questions for you um, about that. I wanted to give you one other announcement. Um, how many of you love Beth Moore? You've done a study of hers. Okay, she's coming to Huntsville, guys, and that's really close to us. So a few of us went a few years ago when Priscilla Shire was down in Huntsville at the Von Braun Center. It's not, it's not a hard drive. So we got up that morning on Saturday morning at like 6 a.m. and drove down and got there by the time the doors opened. Um, I'm not even opposed to a girls' weekend if some of us want to gather together. Um, I'll have a flyer out there. It is September the 15th, okay? And that may seem like a long time away, but it's going to be here before we know it. Um, if you are not a part of the Gateway Women's Facebook page, you need to go out there and ask to join it, and we will put you in there. Um, we will accept that, and that's how I'm going to post things because it's going to be too hard for me. You have to go get your own individual ticket. I think it's $59 for the day. Um, that might be the early bird rate if you book it ahead of time. So it's an all-day event down in Huntsville. Um, and I'm open to if some of you want to head down on Friday night and we can block some rooms in a hotel and go do a Friday night kind of deal. We've had several people that have done that before in the past um, and have dinner and just relax a little bit. But those of you who can't get away for a night, we'll just go for the day and, and haul back up. The, you know, you're back up here by 5 or 6 o'clock, I think, um, by the time the day is over. And, and we'll just keep those notifications going out there on the Facebook page, just reminding. Um, so if you're interested in that, go to Lifeway, look at the tickets, and then um, I'll put it out there on the Gateway page, and then you just chime in if you're interested, and we'll try to connect all those people um, for that. Ashley wants me to tell you also there is a photo booth out there. She did a great job of getting all the decorations out there for us. And so there's a Gateway Women's photo booth now that we have our own little official um, um, backdrop back there. And also, just let's just be clear. This means Gateway Women, not Gina Weir. Um, just so you know, um, for the future. 
Um, so we need to hashtag Gateway Women when you get out there and take your picture. Um, and also, uh, as I love to say all the time, thank you to everybody who is, maybe this is your first women's event that you've walked into and maybe you don't know anybody, you don't know many people. Thank you for taking a risk and coming on. Um, and all of us others who've got buddies here and who we can go get in the photo booth and hashtag Gateway Women with, let's be mindful and look around who's with us tonight and maybe that somebody doesn't have a group with them. And let's grab them in the photo booth with us as well and um, get them in the picture. So um, I'm going to pray us out. And then we have lots of chocolate fountain food to partake in. Lord, thank you so much for your goodness and your faithfulness to us. Thank you for, Lord, just the blessing that we have had, Lord, tonight of just being in your presence, being refreshed, Lord, being still, um, just basking in your presence, Lord. I thank you for each and every woman that's in this room. I pray, God, your blessings on her. I pray your blessings on her um, and her family, that your favor would rest upon her, that your hand of protection would rest upon her and her family. And Lord, we just um, give you praise and thank you for all that you have done for us. And we pray, God, that you would just give us all safe travels home tonight. And thank you once again, Lord, for your presence with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>